here in the nave and especially to those who are with us online. Uh, it, it is just wonderful to be together in whatever way we can do that. Each of our services this evening and over the course of this weekend are unique. This one, as you already know, features St. James, members of St. James Worship Band and a jazz ensemble. There is a bulletin on St. James' website, especially for those of you who are at home. The website is stjamesscan.org, and you can click on the banner heading for this service, which is the first one up, and it will take you directly to the bulletin. For those online, please do let us know who you are and where you are. It's wonderful to see uh, how we are gathered as a congregation across the country this evening, and please do greet one another. And now I invite those who are present here to stand and let us sing our opening carol. have uh, something to say that is very thoughtful and appropriate, but tonight I just want to say welcome and Merry Christmas.
this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Blessed and happy Christmas Eve to each of you. God in Jesus Christ enables us to be free and makes our transformation possible. Grace, compassion, kindness, and all the fruits of the Spirit are birthed in us through God's work. So this reading is from the letter that Paul wrote to Titus and is written to us tonight. The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he, Jesus Christ himself, giving himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. deep in our hearts and he is sharper than the blade of any sword grass is fade flowers fall but God's love The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus to all that the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. 
He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born in this city, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a char- child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had what had been told them about the child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them but mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them the gospel of the lord that is fresh and new and alive for us this night. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. If I were setting out to write a story so compelling that it would continue being told for 2,000 years, I don't think I would start with Luke's cast of characters. Far better to feature an emperor or, at the very least, the governor of a giant nation, although I probably would choose one that had an easier name to say than Quirinius. But this is the cast of characters that Luke has because they are the cast that God chose. An unwed teenage mother from a no-account backwater town. Her fiancé, who broke the law. That's right, Joseph flagrantly ignored religious law that states that a woman who got pregnant without being married was supposed to be stoned to death. At the very least, she was to be shunned. Joseph chose instead to let her live to let her baby live, and to carry on with his plan to become a family. The main characters in this story are not only those that have been remembered for centuries, but they are beloved. A pregnant girl with a very suspicious story, and a father who violated his religious duty. And then we have a helpless dependent baby with poor prospects given the parents that he has. And that baby is the reason all the male children under the age of two in the vicinity of Bethlehem were slaughtered by the king not too long afterward. However, Jesus' parents fled to Egypt before that happened where they were refugees crossing the border into a country where they knew no one probably had only the clothes on their backs. It just goes from bad to worse. Also, among the characters in this story are shepherds, the most despised laborers in that culture. Thankfully, there was a kind-hearted innkeeper and an angel choir who delivered a singing telegram. 
Honestly, I can't imagine things starting out much worse for Mary and Joseph, except, of course, if it had all happened in a pandemic. Even the birth of Mary's firstborn son was overshadowed by what we know would be a life of rejection and ultimately a tragic death. Mary and Joseph, like any people of their age, no doubt had hopes and dreams. They'd get married, raise a family, build a business, establish themselves in their community. But instead, they were hit with one unexpected and incredibly difficult event after another. And yet, these were the people God chose. And this was the situation, the precise circumstances in which God showed up. Remember that one of the names of Jesus is Emmanuel. We sang it in the first song. Emmanuel means God with us. God chose these people, this situation, to come and dwell among us, to pitch a tent and camp out among God's people. So I want you to think for a moment about your own situation, your life leading up to tonight, and our world as it has been the past two years or so. There are few of us, if any, who have arrived at Christmas Eve 2021 without some disappointment, some shadow of grief, or loss. Some recognition that the future remains unknown. Maybe even some fear. One of the resounding messages of the Christmas story is that God is here. Emmanuel with us. God is here in precisely this place, this time, this set of circumstances, as challenging or unexpected as they may be. No matter who you are or what your situation, God is with you always. No matter what challenges or changes you face, God is with you. No matter what unexpected place you find yourself, no matter how uncertain the future may look, no matter how unsettling the news might be day after day, God is with you, literally dwelling with you. And what God brings in the words of Paul's letter to Titus, is a thing we call salvation. Sam Portero, in his book of meditations called Day Springs, points out that salvation means something akin to healing. The New English Bible translates it like this, for the grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing, for all. Portero reminds us that healing means wholeness. And I quote, not to be confused with the absence of disease or hurt, healing is accessible to all. Nor does it mean perfection. A life can be far from perfect and still be whole. Indeed, no life can be truly whole unless it includes everything, the good and the bad, the joyful and the sad, the beauty and the ugliness. End of quote. 
One of the miracles of Jesus' birth is that life becomes whole, even in its imperfection. God has come to fill the gaps, to bring healing, to restore what is broken, to gather in all manner of people and all circumstances of life even those things that don't look promising to us. Situations where there is loss or sadness or fear. God has come here. God has come for such a time as this. God comes for us to make us and all of life miraculously whole. Amen. Our faith includes the belief that God is always with us, and in bad times, particularly, God will wrap loving arms around us if we but, but just ask. And provide that healing that only God can give. We don't know what that healing will be, but God will provide. And because we believe all this, please stand with me again and recite the ancient Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is flesh among us. Let us pray for ourselves, for those in need of our prayers, and for God's people everywhere. At the close of each petition, you are invited to respond. Hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, bless your holy church, the community of believers throughout the world, that it may faithfully proclaim the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for your creation, especially where it is wounded. Renew the whole earth with your love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in our troubled world, that the darkness of conflict and war may be replaced by the light of your peace and love. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the leaders of the nations and peoples of the world that they may put aside their own ambitions and strive for justice promoting the dignity and freedom of all people. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who labor this night on behalf of others, doctors, nurses, and aides, police officers, firefighters, and those in the armed forces, and for all those whose work prevents them from sharing this evening with those they love. Lord, in your mercy. 
On this most holy night, we commend to your loving care all those in need, the victims of war, violence, injustice, and oppression, the poor, refugees, the homeless, the unemployed, the hungry, and those who are alone. Lord, in your mercy. We offer our prayers for those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, for those we name, now name, either aloud or in our hearts. And for those whose needs are known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all those whom we love but see no more, commending them to your merciful care, especially those we now name. Grant that we, like them, may come to that place where we may dwell in the glorious light of your eternal word. Lord, in your mercy. The quiet of this night by the utterance of your word made flesh, the gift of your son. Accept, we pray, our words of praise and petition let us and all your people be strong echoes of the Christmas word which you have spoken, that all might come to know the peace which you have given us in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior this night and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please turn and greet one another with the peace of Christ. Just in case you um, haven't, this hasn't been clear to you, uh, Michael Larkin has arranged all the music tonight. What, what a gift um, to have his, the generosity of his talents shared so um, much for us this evening. I do want to say a special uh, word of welcome again to those who might be visitors this evening. We have a gift for you. As you go out the doors uh, tonight, there is on your right in the lobby a Christmas tree that has a handmade ornament on it, and we would love to have you take one and take it home for your own Christmas tree. We do have um, a Christmas version of the weekly which is our newsletter that has information in it with upcoming events and programs and that you will find on the table the welcome table also in the lobby on your way out or if you prefer uh, an electronic version you can go to our website and it is um, also there just a click away on the um, Christmas page the incredible decorations, the flowers, the candles, the live Christmas tree that's hoisted up there in the back. Uh, all of this is the brainchild of Bill and Corinne Buderbau and their uh, incredible work, as well as the generosity of all of you who have given so graciously in memory and in thanksgiving for others. There is in your bulletin and also on our website a listing of all the the people being remembered and um, in, 
and honored as well as those who are the donors. And so please do take a look at that. I have uh, one correction to the bulletin, and that is that um, our lead trumpet player this evening is Nick Fields. Dave Peebles um, tested positive with COVID, as has mm. happened with um, all kinds of folks this week. This is really quite, a, quite an ensemble that we have here. Thank you to one and all. And I um, just do have to mention that Kip Kerper and Michael Larkin are also part of that ensemble. And um, Becky and Brian Heidi are our vocals tonight. So thank you very much to all of you. It's just amazing to listen to you. Um, at the close of the service, we want to be able to greet you, but we also want to keep people from congregating indoors. And so Chuck and I are going to, after the dismissal, we're going to head out the doors and stand at the top of the parking lot to greet those of you who are leaving um, to head on home. And we would love to say Merry Christmas um, and greet you outdoors. We do have a wonderful, rich schedule of services. There is another one this evening at 9.30 with a whole different array of music. We had a pageant at 3.30 that was entirely recorded with a couple of dozen children. It is absolutely adorable. It's recorded and posted on YouTube and our website. So sometime over the next week, I just would encourage you to look at um, either or both of the services. We do have a Christmas Day service tomorrow at 10. It is one of the few that will not be live streamed this weekend. And we have two services on Sunday morning, 7.30 and 9. It will be, both will be Christmas lessons and carols. Both will be in person and the 9 a.m. service will also be live streamed. So it, I think it's appropriate to thank our tech team because all of this live streaming doesn't just happen. And so that's Nick Kilkenny and Michael and Danae Heidi, who is uh, manning the switcher booth out in the parish hall. Uh, thank you all for making all of this possible. And I think a, a round of applause is appropriate. At the time of communion, uh, the ushers will indicate that it is your turn to come forward. If you're on the outside aisles, we ask that you go to the back first um, so that you can come down and, and take advantage of the hand sanitizer that is there in the center aisle. And uh, if you would keep your mask on and take the bread back to your seat before you consume, that will um, keep us all uh, safer, I trust. Know that whoever you are, and wherever you may be on your journey in faith, you are invited to the Lord's table this evening. I see the candles glow in the window. I hear the church bells starting to chime Millions of snowflakes falling from heaven Turning the world from
standing as you are able. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, loving God, for you did not stand far off, but came in nearness with the tenderness of love. We praise you for the word made flesh, born of Mary, cradled in her arms, greeted by her song. The fullness of God dwells in his flesh, a touch of welcome for the outcast, good news of bread for the hungry and poor, a shepherd to find those who are lost. And so we gladly thank you, joining our voices with saints and angels, we now sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, love us in your grace. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the Father, we bring you these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your Son by means of this holy bread and cup. We show forth the sacrifice of his death, 
and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us by this holy communion into one body in your son, Jesus Christ, making us a living sacrifice by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we, who, those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the table of Jesus. It is prepared for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. It is not I who invites you, but Christ the Lord, and it is his longing that you meet him here this night. The congregation may be seated.
and ransom captive his high hand that mourns in lonely exile he until the sun of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to be the wings I
Standing as you are able, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of the Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. By the way of Bethlehem, lead us, O Lord, to newness of life. By the innocence of the Christ child, renew our simple trust. By the tenderness of Mary, deliver us from cruelty and hardness of heart. By the patience of Joseph, save us from all rash, judgment, and ill-tempered action. By the shepherd's watch, open our eyes to the signs of your coming. By the shining of a star, guide our feet into the way of peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this night and forever. Amen.
Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.